Welcome to part two of section 5.5. In this video, we're going to prove uh, something that we already know about linear systems. We've been using it, but we haven't proven it formally. It's in the form of theorem 5.5.1. And the theorem says a system of linear equations has zero, one, or infinitely many solutions. There are no other possibilities. So we've been working on this assumption, but now we can prove this formally. We've seen linear systems that have no solutions that are inconsistent. So we know that that can happen. We've seen systems with a unique solution, so we know that that can occur. And we've seen systems with infinitely many solutions. And we've seen, seen several examples of that, so we know that that happens. However, how do we know that there aren't systems that have two solutions or 17 solutions? Now, we have a sufficient understanding of linear systems to be fairly confident that that's not the case, that it can't, they can't have two solutions or 17. But now we have the notation and the terminology to prove this formally. Okay, so I'm going to start with the assumption that the system has more than one solution. So we're going to say, assume, assume that the linear system, the linear system AX equals B, AX equals B, has more than one solution, has more than one solution. And what we want to prove, and so this is the part where we state exactly what we want to show, which is that we want to show that it has infinitely many, that it has infinitely many solutions. So if it has more than one, then it has infinitely many solutions. That's the goal of our proof. And so we'll start with saying, well, if there are more than, if there is more than one solution, then we'll say let x1 and x2, these are matrices, uh, be two distinct solutions, two distinct solutions of the linear system. And I'm going to define x0 or x0 as x1 minus x2. Okay, And this is not 0 or the 0 matrix because x1 is different from x2. And so if we define that, then I'm going to multiply a by x0. So ax0 is a times x1 minus x2, the difference of the two solutions. But of course, matrix multiplication is distributive. We know that. So ax1 minus ax2. And we know that ax1 is b because x1 is a solution of the system. So ax1 equals b. And the same way, we know that ax2 is b. So b minus b equals the zero matrix. And therefore, if you look at read this from left to right, ax0 equals zero. In other words, that's like saying that x0 is a solution of the homogeneous system, is a solution solution of the homogeneous genius system, which we can denote by AX equals zero. So the same matrix A that we're using above, but this time as a homogeneous system. So we've shown that X zero is a solution of that homogeneous system. And one more step, which is consider the expression. So I'm going to write an expression using those matrices we just defined. So consider the expression x1 plus t times x0, or x0, where t can be any real number. So you notice this expression will have different values uh, depending on what t is. Okay, And let me remind you that uh, x1 is it's a particular solution of ax equals b. So this is a solution of ax equals b. Whereas x0, we showed above that it's a solution of ax equals zero, so the homogeneous system, right? So by combining those with a scalar t, that can be any real number, we've come up with an expression. And let's see what happens if, whoops, let me use black, if I multiply a by that expression, so a times x1 plus t x zero, and I get by distributing, right? These are two, sum of two matrices. Uh, matrix multiplication is distributive, so ax1 plus a times t x0. t is a scalar, and so we know that instead of putting it in front of x0, we can place it in front of a, right? We can move it, and so I'm going to have ax1 plus t times ax0. But then we just say that ax1 is b, because x1 is a solution of the system ax equals b, and ax0, we just said, is a solution of the homogeneous system, and so it's the zero matrix. And therefore, this is b plus zero, in other words, b. So what we've just shown, if we take a step back and reread the statement, 
we've shown that a times this expression, which is a sum of x1 plus a scalar times x0, is equal to b. In other words, we've shown that x1 plus t x0 is a solution, is a solution of ax equals b, and this is true for any for any scalar t, right? For any t belonging to R. And so if this is true for any t belonging to R, that means that there are infinitely many solutions, right? Because you can give t any value you like, and therefore the system, the system ax equals b has infinitely, infinitely many solutions. And that is exactly what we wanted to prove. And I'll conclude this part. So this concludes the proof. And I'll simply conclude this video by attracting your attention to a little piece of notation here, which is that in some contexts, instead of using this expression, ax equals b, which is a way of seeing a linear system as a matrix equation, in some contexts you'll see it written like this, where it's a matrix times a vector equals another vector. The logic behind that is that the matrix x, I call it a matrix, but it's a column matrix, right? It's always n by 1. And so we saw that a column matrix can also be thought of as a vector, right? So you can think of it as the vector x rather than the matrix x. And same thing for b. b is a column matrix, an m by 1. So you could think of it as a vector in rm, right? rm because it has m components, whereas x is in rn because it has n components. Uh, so that's an alternative notation to ax equals b, but you'll see that we're going to stick mostly to this notation, where we uh, consider a linear system as a matrix equation.